In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what the Elementor Pro Call to Action widget does, how it works, all of its settings, and a cool demo of what you can do with it, and we're getting started right now. Hey, what is going on? My name is Bjorn. If you like WordPress tips and tricks and always getting better at it, make sure you click subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And this video is part of the Elementor Pro playlist in this channel link in the description down below or part of the comments down below. Make sure you check out the whole playlist to see all the widgets in action. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you get on the Elementor Pro Ultimate Course waitlist, which I'm building right now. I'm still in the process of building it. It's not completed yet. Getting on the waitlist is no obligation. But if you do like Elementor and you want to know how to do everything with it, get on that waitlist. Link in the description down below. And with that out of the way, let's hit in the screen capture. I'll see you there. The next one we're going to do is call to action. So let's just copy Flipbox element from here, paste it down below, or the headline I mean. Let's rename it to call to action element. Go to the grid, scroll down, drag and drop it over. And here we have our call to action. Let's add an image first so we get it to look like something. So here's a call to action image, I guess. That's not a bad image. You can change the position of the image, or sorry, the layout of the call to action. If you have it left, the image goes to the left. So what you choose here is basically defining where the image goes. Image left, image top, image right, and they all look very nice. You can change the skin from classic to cover, and cover is the text on the image. I don't like that too much in this case, because we've done that a lot already. We put a lot of images and text on top of other images, like we did in the flip box here. So we've done that to death already. I want to do a little different, so I'm going to have it like this. For the content, you just change the text here. So maybe it's uh, buy this folder. Looks like that girl is selling a folder. It's the best history in the history of folders. Awesome. Buy now. It's a call to action, so I actually have to have a call to action. For the ribbon, if we add a title, it adds a ribbon. So maybe it's on sale. And there's our ribbon that appears on the right side there. We can change its position using this button here. And we can change the color of the ribbon as well. This min height here is for the box itself, the box as a whole. If you want to change that there, you can do so. The vertical position is where this text appears. So if you have it really high, you can see the text goes to the bottom, the center, or the top. I'm not going to have it that tall, so I'm just going to put it like this, have the text centered. The image, you can change the minimum width. doesn't really apply when it's stretched across. You can change the minimum height. It can make it a little taller, so you can see some more of the binder, the content, change the typography for the title. That is this title here. Let's just make that open sans because that's what we do. Open sans. All right. Spacing is the space below the title. Description is the spacing below the description. And change the typography as well. And the colors, of course, as always, I'm going to change the background color to be slightly gray. So it kind of stands out from the back, white color. You can change that on hover if you like. The button is settings for the button. I'm going to make mine large. I'm going to reduce the spacing between the description and the button. For the ribbon, I'm going to change the color to red. That yellow doesn't really stand out very much. You can change the distance, which is how far into the image it goes. Rather have it not far enough, you can have it too far, or you can have it just right in the Goldilocks zone. You can give it a shadow, so it looks like over looks like it's over top of the image a little bit, and the shadow is very subtle by default. But you can change the settings here to make it not so subtle if you want to. The hover effects apply to the image. Currently, it's on zoom in, so when you hover over, it zooms in. I kind of like that effect. There's zoom out. That's okay. There's move left. And move right, move up, move down. You can kind of see what those are. Sequenced animation is apparently, I did some reading on this because you turn this on, nothing really happens. It's sequenced animation for the text down here. I haven't quite figured out how that one setting works because I can't make it do anything. So if anybody knows, leave a comment down below because I don't really know what that's for. The overlay color, by default it gets a little darker, but you can have it always with an overlay color. 
and it gets even, or it gets brighter actually when you when it hovers, because on the hover we can have a different overlay color. We can make this one green. So when you hover, you get green. Maybe not so opaque. There we go. That's pretty good. Actually, let's make that yellow so it looks brighter. Actually, I'm not going to have a color for the normal one. You add CSS filters, like for a lot of other image elements. If you have on hover, if we change saturation, we can have it super saturated when you hover. Saturation means it's it's more red. Change the hue, which is kind of like changing the color with the overlay. But you have some pretty trippy effects. Like if you watch her shirt over here, watch how it changes colors from red to orange to green to blue to turquoise. You can create some pretty trippy effects using CSS filters. The duration is how long it takes for that zoom in to happen. So the more milliseconds you have here, the longer it takes. I'm going to put mine at 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. And that's how it goes right there. So now I'm going to add two more call to actions. I'm just going to add a new column. I'm going to copy this call to action, paste it in here. I'm going to change it so the image is aligned to the left. Image disappeared. If we go to style, our image width is set to zero. So we got to change that to a non-zero value to show our image again over here. And I want to change the height. So it's a little, little shallower. There we go. That's pretty good. Now if I copy this one and paste it again, didn't work for some reason. Try again. Copy. Let's just duplicate this. Copy paste is not working right there. Move it to the right. Turn the sail off. And the sail off on this one. Now we have a nice little call to action block here. Let's change the height of this guy so they're the same height, at least on desktop, or roughly the same height. That's pretty good. Now, if these were different images, let's just do that because it goes pretty quick. Um, maybe this guy is selling a phone and she's selling some paper. And there we go. That's a pretty good looking little elements right there. One last thing, you can also add icons, just like we could for the flip box. So we're going to add that icon there. And this is pretty tall now. Let's see if I can shrink that icon size. Graphic element icon size. There we go. Let's make it a smaller icon. That's too small. That's pretty good. Let's just change the height of this guy again so that we're all the same height. There we go. Pretty good looking call to action area. And that's how you use the call to action widget for Elementor. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And also consider buying Elementor through the affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase it that way, but Elementor does send me a few dollars commission, which helps me keep these glorious lights on. And if you do purchase through there, thank you very much. And next up was clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.